Charlie Brown couldn't fly a kite to save his life, but a B-17... Hello Weirdos, welcome to Educating Manny, our weekly series for party conversation education. Subscribe so you don't miss out, and while you're down there, ring our bell for notifications. Also want to point out, last week's prize winners, Mikma won the Weirdo Cargo, and Fatel83 won the t-shirt. Both of you shoot me an email at hello at legionofweirdos.com, and Fatel83, let me know which shirt and size and color, links in the description for that. This week we'll have two more winners, subscribe and comment to be eligible. With that out of the way... On December 20th, 1943, Second Lieutenant Charles Charlie Brown and his crew set out in a United States Army Air Force's B-17 called Ye Old Pub. It was their first bombing mission. The target was a German aircraft factory. The outside air temperature was minus 60 degrees Celsius, and Brown's team was assigned to a position called Purple Heart Corner. That spot in the formation is the last and most exposed plane in the group. The B-17 was one of the most rugged bombers ever built. It was known to be able to take a lot of hits and still make it home. In fact, a lot of them limped back with damage that would have downed any other airplane. Because of its toughness and all its guns, the Germans called the plane the Flying Porcupine. As they began the bombing run, Charlie's plane was hit by anti-aircraft fire, shattering the plexiglass nose and damaging two engines. He had to throttle back to avoid destroying the engines completely, which meant he couldn't stay in formation. Separated from the group, Brown's B-17 sustained 10 minutes of attacks from over a dozen German fighters. A third engine was damaged. The plane had about 40% of its rated available power. The onboard oxygen, the hydraulics, and the electrical system were all damaged. The tail gunner was dead. Three of the crew were injured, and Brown had a hit to the shoulder. With the broken windows, the interior of the plane got so cold, the morphine syringes froze over, making first aid a lot more complicated. And oh yeah, the radio was destroyed too. It's not just a job, it's an adventure. Meanwhile, Franz Stigler, that is such a German name, caught up to the damaged B-17 in his Messerschmitt BF-109. The BF-109 was Germany's go-to plane for World War II. It was fast, it was agile, and it had about the smallest frame you could put around its V-12 engines. The Germans called it the skinny one. Stigler was an ace fighter pilot more than four times over and needed only one more downed plane to get the Knight's Cross, which was a high honor in the German military during World War II. This would be like picking up a one pin spare for Dick Weber. You don't know who that is, huh? All right, it's like picking up a one pin spare for Jesus. You said it, man. As Stigler eyed the plane, he could see the wounded crew through the holes of the fuselage, and the words of a former commander came to his head. If I ever see or hear of you shooting at- Okay, the accent's cheesy. He said, if I ever see or hear of you shooting at a man in a parachute, I'll shoot you myself. Of course, he probably said that in German. Attacking a man descending from a disabled airplane was considered barbaric in war time, even for the Nazis. Stigler later said, to me, it was just like they were in a parachute. I couldn't shoot them down. Stigler then tried to to get Brown to land in Germany and surrender or divert to nearby Sweden, a neutral country, but Brown didn't understand the gestures and kept flying straight ahead. Stigler stayed in close formation to the B-17 to keep other fighters from attacking, and he escorted Brown and his crew out over open water and then departed with a salute. Brown piloted the damaged plane another 250 miles across the North Sea and landed in England. There he was told to keep his story to himself. Wouldn't want to build any positive sentiment toward German pilots. Stigler kept quiet about the incident as well, knowing his actions could get him executed. After the war, Brown went back home and Stigler moved to Canada in 1953. In 1986, Brown decided to try finding the German pilot who escorted him out of danger, and four years later they were reunited and remained friends till Stigler's death in 2008. Join our Facebook group, we're just plain fun! If you hated this video, give me an ironic thumbs up. Remember, we're here every Tuesday and Thursday with new videos. On the screen is a link to another video YouTube thinks you'll like, plus links for subscription and our other channels. And until next time, stay out of the comfort zones.